All right, so uh, last video, we talked about quantum numbers. We have these four quantum numbers, N, L, M sub L, and M sub S, that enables, enable us to classify an electron in pretty much any orbital. Again, N, energy level that the electron resides. L, that tells us the shape of the orbital. It's either going to be an S, a P, or a D, an o, an F. M sub L tells us the orientation of that orbital. And then M sub S is the spin on the electron. Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? All right, now, hydrogen is really easy to classify because there's only one electron. But when we start dealing with a many electron system like helium, which has two electrons, we've got to know the electronic configuration of the atom. So in other words, how are the electrons distributed among the various atomic orbitals? And knowing electronic configuration is going to allow us to figure out the electronic behavior of the atom. So let's take a look at this. The electronic configuration for hydrogen, simplest atom, is 1s1. Okay, And so when we look at the hydrogen, you know, the, the electronic configuration for hydrogen, we have that 1 in front, which is a coefficient. That coefficient tells us n. So again, that's the principal quantum number, or the energy level, if I can spell energy correct. Okay, two, which is going to be the letter, so that's S, okay, so that tells us, that's the letter that we're looking at, this tells us the angular momentum quantum number. So this is going to tell us what the shape of the orbital looks like. Okay, and again, that's the L quantum number. All right, and then you have that superscript, which is a one. The superscript tells us the number of electrons in that orbital. Okay, so that's how we read these electronic configurations. Now, so this is how we tend to write electronic configurations. We could also write it as an orbital diagram, which would look like this. So I'm going to write the, the atomic symbol, hydrogen, which is a capital H, and what I'm going to do is draw a line, okay, right next to it. And underneath, I'm just going to write 1s because we know that that's going to be the first orbital that we put electrons in. And what I'm going to do is draw in a half arrow that's pointing up, okay? So that tells us that we have one electron in the 1s orbital. Now, because it's pointing up, the electron, the arrow is pointing up, that also tells us that the magnetic spin is going to be a plus one half. So this is by, this is usually by convention that we figure that out. And if the arrow is pointing down, then that tells us that the magnetic spin is going to be a minus one half, so it's going counterclockwise. Okay. Now it's really important every time you have an electron with the spin up. <coughs> excuse me. You're always going to pair it with something that's pointed down. Okay. So we can make these electronic configurations, or we can draw the orbital diagrams for pretty much any atom or any ion, and that's what we're going to do, especially with the end of chapter eight and then going into chapter nine, that's pretty much what we're gonna be looking at. Now, that being said, when we write electronic configurations, there are three major rules that we've gotta follow, and here they are. I'm gonna box these up because these are so super, super duper important. All right, so the first one says this. This is called the Pauli exclusion principle where no two electrons in an atom can have the same set of quantum numbers. So no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers. So you can't have two electrons that are absolutely the same. Okay. The second rule is this. Hund's rule. And it says this, that the lowest energy arrangement of electrons in a subshell is obtained by putting electrons into separate orbitals of the subshell with the same spin before pairing electrons. So let me explain this one a little bit. 
So the first orbital that we have to deal with that actually has this kind of a problem is 2p. And with 2p, there's three different ways of drawing that. So remember that m sub l could have a value of negative 1, could have a 0, or could have a positive 1 value. And so when we put electrons in, because these three subshells or suborbitals are equal in energy to each other, or when we say that subshells are equal in energy, we use the word degenerate. Okay, so when the subshells are degenerate or equal in energy, that means we got to put one electron in each of the subshells first before we go in and pair them up. And so that's what Hun's rule is saying that if you've got you've got to put the electrons in separate orbitals of the subshell first with the same spin before you start pairing them up. So that, that's what Hun's rule is trying to say. The final one is called the Aufbau, which is German for building up. So the Aufbau principle says this. It's a scheme that's used to reproduce the electronic configuration of the ground states of atoms by successfully filling subshells in a specific order. And according to that Aufbau principle, we start with 1s, and then we go to 2s. We follow it with 2p, then 3s then 3p, then 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s, 4f, 5d, 6p, 7s, 5f, 6d, and 7p. Now, basically, there's no other way around this. You just gotta memorize this, part, the, memorize this principle. We do have a figure here that kind of helps figure out the order in which we start. So again, we, we start with 1s, then move down to 2s. So every time we finish an arrow, we go to the beginning of the other one. Okay, so we get to the end of the second arrow, we start with 2p. When we get to the end of that arrow, we go down to 3p. So that's kind of how this works. Think of it as like a, a line that's connected. Okay. All right, so that's pretty much the, this is the off-bow principle. This is the order in which we got to put the electrons. This is really important. Okay, you got to know this. I'm going to put a star next to this. Hell, I'll even put a smiley face next to this because this is, it's that important. All right, so before we start applying those three rules, okay, there's also some general rules that we've got to use to assign electrons to atomic orbitals. So let's try that. Let's take a look at these rules really quickly. So one says each shell or principal level of quantum number n contains n subshells. So let's say n equals two, okay? Then that means that you're gonna have two subshells. In this case, you're gonna have an S subshell and you can also have a P subshell, okay? Now, each subshell of quantum number L is going to contain 2L plus 1 atomic orbitals, okay? So remember, L tells us the shape. So let's say L is 1, okay, which describes a P orbital. So if we want to know how many different orbitals that each sub that subshell describes, if L is 1, 2 times 1 would be 2 plus 1 would be 3 different orbitals. So that's how that works. <coughs> and excuse me. And then number three says no more than two electrons can be placed in each orbital because that's a violation of the Pauli exclusion principle. Okay. So that's why that one, that rule comes into play. And then finally, a quick way to determine the maximum number of electrons that can, that an atom can have in a principal level n is to use this formula 2n squared. So if I'm at the third, if let's say I'm at the n equals 3 energy level, the amount of electrons that can be at the n equals 3 energy level is going to be 3 squared, which would be 9, times 2 would be 18. So if I want there should be only 18 electrons at the n equals 3 energy level. So that's kind of how, that's kind of nice. Now, one other thing that we can do is actually use the periodic table to help us figure out that off-bound principle. So if we're looking at a specific atom, 
we can actually trace that pattern on the periodic table. And once we find its position on the periodic table, we can actually determine what is the last orbital that's actually going to be filled for that electron for that atom. So let me give you an example. Let's try this out. What is the electronic configuration for titanium? All right. So on the periodic table, titanium ha is going to have an atomic number of 22. So that means if we have neutral titanium, it's going to have 22 electrons. Okay. So what I'm going to do, what we're going to do is write this out three different ways. Let's first write this out using orbital notation so we can see the arrows. And then we'll write it out using the normal everyday electronic configuration. And then thirdly, last, I'm going to show you a fast way of writing the electronic configuration. All right, so here we go. So uh, titanium has 22 electrons. We got to keep that in mind. As we're going. So the first orbital according off bow is going to be the 1s orbital, and we're going to put two electrons in there. Okay. Again, make sure that we, every time you have an electron spinning, uh, pointing up, you've got another one that's pointing down. After you go to 1s, then you're at 2s. So you're going to have two electrons up, down. Okay. After 2s, you're going to have 2p, and you've got three of those subshells, or sub uh, three of those orbitals. And now I got to follow Hun's rule. I'm going to put three of them pointing up in each of the subshells, and then I'm going to have them pointing down. Okay. So at this point, I've put in two plus two, which is four, plus six, which is ten. So I'm going to make a note right here. We put in ten, ten electrons. All right. So after we go to two p, the next one is going to be three s, and I'm going to put two electrons in. The 3s, so we're at 12. After we go to 3s, we're going to go to 3p, and I've got to put again follow Hun's rule, one electron in each of the subshells first before I go in and pair them up. Okay, so that gives us that was 10 at the end of 2p, 12 for 3s, 14, 16, and now I've got 18 electrons at the end of 3p. Now, according to the periodic table, we're right here, and titanium is about right over yonder, okay? So before I put in, so it looks like in order to put in the next set of electrons, they've got to go into 4s first, and that's what that's what the off-bound principle says. All right, so I'm going to put in the, the electrons in the 4s, so that's two electrons that gets us a 20, and now it's time for the 3d, 3b. 3D, there's five of these, okay, five subshells, and I'm going to put them in, put one electron in each of the orbitals first. Now, I run out of, le of electrons. I have two electrons left, so I can put only put in two electrons, and that's okay. But that is the orbital diagram for titanium. Now, what I'm going to do is take this orbital diagram and let's write this as a traditional electronic configuration. So I'm going to write 1s, and in the superscript, because I know that there's two electrons in 1s, I'm going to write 1s2. I'm going to do the same thing for 2s. I've got two electrons, so uh, two arrows, so I'm going to put a 2 as superscript. We're at 2p. And I've got six elect six arrows, so I'm going to put a six in front of that. Okay, let me make a let me make a little line here, so that way we're I'm keeping this a little bit cleaner. After the two p, we got the three s, and we've got two electrons in there. After two a three s, we've got the three p's, and we've got six electrons in there. After that, we've got four s, and we've got two electrons in there. And then finally, 3D, we've got two electrons in there. So this would be the electronic configuration for titanium. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d2. All right, so that's the full electronic configuration. Now, there is a, short, there is a shorthand way of doing this. So if I take a look 
at this part of the electronic configuration. 1S22, S22, P6, 3S2, 3P6. That gets me to the end of that last row that's complete. And so what we say is that this is the same electronic configuration like that noble gas in column eight in family 8A. And that noble gas is argon. So the shorthand notation would be to say that titanium has the same electronic configuration as argon plus 4S2, 3D2. Now, to, to indicate that our, it's argon and that it has the same electronic configuration, what we do is actually put argon in brackets. So that indicates that we're dealing with the electronic configuration of argon plus the 4S2, 3D2. Now, some books, when it comes to this electronic configuration, I tend to write it in the order of offbound that you fill up 4S before you go to 3D. Some books may write it backwards where it's 3D2, 4S2. Either way is fine, but keep in mind when I write electronic configurations, I'm going to write it this way as part of the offbound. Okay. And so that's how we do electronic configurations. And then finally, the last page of your notes actually has a table. It, I will admit that it's a little bit dated at this point because there are, um, it only goes to 111 elements. And right now there's 118 elements. But this is going to give you, this table does give you all the shorthand notations, uh, shorthand electronic notations of electronic configurations of uh, the first 111 elements. All right, so there we are. That's how we do electronic configurations. So the next part is how do we apply this all to the periodic table? We know that the periodic table, there is a little bit of apply application here where we can use electronic configurations and the periodic table together, but how is the periodic table actually constructed? So that's our next next topic.